One of my subscribers requested a bass lesson, so I'm going to do occasional bass lessons here and there. This is going to be a lesson on walking bass lines. So what I'm going to do here is an 8 bar blues in G. I'll do it a couple times through and then break it down. Back to the top. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're basically going from the, we're gonna look at the uh, one, four, and five. Those are your changes usually in a blues type thing. So what I'm doing is uh, basically a riff off of the, see this would be the G7, G dominant seven arpeggio would be those notes. And if we look at the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's a major scale. We're gonna be using a flat seven. So what we're doing is we're going one, three, five, which is a major triad. If we added that, that'd be the flat seven. That'd be the other note of a dominant arpeggio, dominant seven arpeggio for G. But we're adding this sixth note in there to make that not such a harsh kind of a thing on that flat seven, make it a little bit more playful with a note from the major scale right there next to it. So we got one, three, five, six, flat seven, six, five, three. So that's our basic pattern for all these different ones. And then at that point we went to the four chord, the C, and we did the exact same thing for C, and then back to G. Go back to C again. And then remember I said one, four, and five. So we're gonna go to the five now. Same type of riff. Back to the four. Back to the one. And then we're gonna end on the five. So once again, we had the one, look at the scale. One, two, three, four, five. So the one and the four and the five, those are our chord changes, the only chord changes we're using for this. So let's look at that one more time, we'll count you in. A one, two, we'll take it kind of slow. One, two, three, and. Let me go to the C. Back to the G. the C and then up to the D to the C G D back and we'll stop on the G okay so that's basically there's a lot of stretching involved in that a lot of finger strength you need to do these kind of walking bass lines like that now, if you're, you're in a key like A, which I have another, I'm gonna have tabs on these. So there's a tab for the A that makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to like hold all these notes as much and you're using some open strings. It makes it a little bit easier in some of those open keys. There's other things you can do like double hitting each note. And you could do that with like one finger that's gonna just go really fast or you can start bringing in the two finger thing. The faster you gotta go, the more you're gonna need to do, bring in two fingers. But I could be like. You can still go pretty fast with one finger when you get used to it. Also, you could be using your thumb on these things. It's a little bit of a different tone. You gotta watch out that you don't have noise ringing on these bigger ones though when you don't have like a lower finger to be muting down there. So we, the different things we have, we have a one note each, or we could do two notes each. I'll go ahead and play that one out.
Another thing you can do is kind of swing it like. So that's kind of a, like swinging it is like a shuffle thing. It's like a triplet with the middle one missing. So instead of a one and a two, and it's like one, a two, a three, a four. That's like that blues beat. Dump, da, dump, da, dump, da, dee, da, dee, dump. So we could do that kind of thing. Go to the C. Back to G. Now our five chord, D in this case. I'm gonna go quicker through those. Sometimes you end a blues on one of those little from the four up to the five chromatic there. So that was the ending on that one. So three different things we can review. We got one note at a time. We have two notes at a time. And we have that staggered thing, that shuffle. Okay, and then what we were doing here is we were doing uh, a measure of this, a uh, measure of the one chord, measure of the four, one. So it's like one, four, one, four, five, four, one, and five. So that was a basic eight bar blues. Now sometimes you could do a 12 bar blues where you might go, you might go four times on that first chord. And then we go to the C. See, this is a longer progression, more bars in it, obviously. Now we would begin our turnaround on that five chord. So that's a 12 bar blues, so it's good to try all those different ones. Now we're going to move over to that other tab, which is going to be in the key of A. We're going to have... And we're going to stick with that 12 bar form. So we're going to do this A uh, four times in a row. So it's A string, and then it's fourth fret. And you want to have these particular fingers because you're going to have to use that pinky down on the fifth. So you got O and four, and then two, four, five, four, two, and then back to that four. And that's your whole measure. So let's try that two, three, four. D string, which is our four chord. We'll do that twice. Back to the A. And then we're going to go to the big E. And then we're going to go down to the D after we finish this one. D. Back to the A, to E, and on the A. So I'll put a little speed in that. So four on the A, down to D. Of course, all these lines, they're good to know for guitar, too, if you're looking here on guitar. Um, every kind of walking bass line on a bass, you could, it helps you kind of understand the chord shapes and the arpeggios on a guitar. And they're good things to sometimes just throw in a song if it's getting a little boring. See if your bass player is just kind of doing this. And you could throw in a... You know, it could sound... It could even be a good uh, writing tool for a tune. 
if uh, somebody's doing something kind of basic, or if you wanted to double up with a walking baseline with your bassist, it's good to be able to know some of these runs and know how they work. So let's go back to the double hitting that thing. So, um, so we're going to double hit it this time. Two more times on A. D. Back to A. E. D. A. And on E. Okay, so I'm gonna try that one more time. Two, three, four. Try that real slow. Dun, 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 dun. Three and four and. At that speed, you don't really need to use the two fingers if you don't want. Also got that staggered kind of shuffle thing. And see, I'm kind of doing those staccato, so you could do them like where they ring out. So you could also try it staccato where you stop each note. So what I'm doing is with this left hand here, I'm Sometimes if you're hitting an open string, you got to mute it with your with your right hand. But there, I'm kind of doing it with that string, but I'm also using this finger to deaden that note. Okay, so that's been a walking bass lesson. That was for Dare to Be Yourself, uh, one of our viewers. I hope that was something that helps you out. I hope that's sort of what you were looking for. And uh, we'll do some more bass in the future, but we'll get back to guitar for now. So thanks you all for watching, and please like and subscribe. There will be tabs at the end of this. So like I said, there's lots of different ways to do these different things. There's different progressions to do, but walking bass lines are really helpful and interesting to know in the bass and on the guitar. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. Appreciate you.